Okay, let's take a look at 11-8b, and then I'll follow that up with 7b and 13b. So in this transaction, or in this problem here, this exercise, we've got a company, Irwin Services Corporation. They have 100,000 shares of $10 par common stock that's authorized. So that's not a beginning balance. It's not a transaction. It's just the board of directors has told them that they can issue up to that amount of shares without coming back to ask to do it more. So on March 1st, they issued 20,000 shares of common stock for $12 per share. Remember, this is $10 par common stock. That's the, they won't issue it below that amount. And on May 2nd, they issued an additional 30,000 shares at $15 per share. So we'll look at the solution here. So on the transaction grid, remember that 100,000 shares, that's not a transaction, so we won't record that. So when we issue on March 1st the uh, excuse me, the 20,000 shares at $12 per share, that means we'll receive 240,000 in cash. We'll increase common stock by the par value times the number of shares, or 200,000, and we'll increase paid in capital in excess for the amount above and beyond par that we issued. On the next transaction, when we issue uh, 30,000 shares at $15 per share, we'll get 450,000 in cash. 30,000 will be the increase to common stock. That's 30,000 shares times the $10 par. And then the excess goes to paid in capital in excess. So that gives us the answers to the rest of the problem. So common stock in total, $500,000. Paid in capital in excess of par total, 190. Total paid in capital is the sum of those two. And their assets, that's 690,000 in cash. So that's 11-8B. The next problem I want to look at is 11-7B. This deals with cash dividends. So this company has 200,000 shares of $10 par common stock. They have 8,000 shares of $100 par 4% non-cumulative preferred stock. So that 4% means the dividend is going to be 4% times the par value or $4 per share is what they'll get. So on May 10th, ALR Corporation declared annual cash dividend on its 8,000 shares of preferred stock. So they said we will pay out the 4% of $100 for those 8,000 shares and a 50 cent per share dividend for all the common shareholders. So the problem asks for you to determine the total amount to be paid. So for preferred stock, we'll have the $100 par times 4% times 8,000 shares. So that'll mean a payout of $32,000. Common stock, that's a funny way to write 50 cents, but 50 cents per share times 200,000 shares is 100,000, so they'll pay out 132. The other problem I wanted to show you is 11-13B. So in this case here, we've got a company that's buying back some of its own shares. So notice they start out with 3,000 shares issued and outstanding, and that's $10 par. They issued 2,000 shares of $10 par common for $16 per share. Then they repurchased 500 shares. They paid $18 per share. And then they resold 120 of those repurchased shares or treasury stock for $20 per share. So they had a gain on that. So the first thing to look at is the number of shares issued and outstanding. So we start out with 3,000 issued and 3,000 outstanding. Remember outstanding means in the hands of shareholders, owned by shareholders. So during the period we issued 2,000 shares, so both columns go up. And when we repurchase re treasury stock, it's still issued, but it's not outstanding any longer. So we reduce that and then increase it again when we resell some of that. So at the end of the period, we've got 5,000 shares that have been issued, 4,620 are in the hands of shareholders, and the remaining 380 are in a desk drawer in the company. So the way that's gonna look on the transaction grid is we'll start out with 30,000 in common stock and 12,000 in paid in capital and access and 46,000 in retained earnings. The problem gives us that. When we issue those shares, we'll get 32,000 in cash. Common stock will go up by 20 and paid in capital and excess up by 12. When we repurchase those shares, we repurchase 500 shares at $18 per share. So we spend $9,000 buying shares back and here's, 
where you have to be a little bit careful in connect. Sometimes connect will have a minus sign for the whole column, which means you'd enter the numbers as a positive number. I think it's more consistent to show it as plus this column and show a negative number in the column. I like that better. Be careful of that on uh, the, the sign of the number um, because it is intended to be a negative number. So that treasury stock, I record that at cost. I don't care about par at that point. And then when I resell those shares, I collect $2,400. I reduce treasury stock by the 120 shares times the $18 cost, so 216. That'll be a positive number, which reduces the negative balance. And then the excess goes to paid in capital and excess for treasury stock. So we record our gain within equity. We don't record it on the income statement. So hopefully that helps. Um, well, I, I'll show you the format here for the uh, for the financial statement. And there's a slide in your lecture that uh, gives the detail for how that's to be presented. But basically, for all categories of stock, we give all the details about the par value and the number of shares authorized, issued, and outstanding. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, please send me an email. Thank you.